I'm Evan Leroy and this is New School Barbecue. Leroy and Lewis Barbecue is a little blue food truck off South Congress in Austin, Texas that cooks locally sourced barbecue on homemade pits. We try our best to honor where barbecue comes from while respectfully adding our own modern touches. These are our recipes, methods, travels, and stories. This is New School Barbecue. Hey barbecue fans, Evan Leroy here. In this video we're making barbacoa and the very popular dish on our menu, the barbacado. The original published date of this video was April 1st of 2020, so right at the beginning of the pandemic, this is the second video to Patreon we ever posted. This series was originally produced for our Patreon, which is linked in the description of this video. When Cosmic, the cafe and beer garden that we serve at, closed for the pandemic, we moved into their parking lot and turned the food truck into a drive-thru. Over the last two years, we produced one video a week about our processes, recipes, adventures, and just us getting through the pandemic. Now that we have this library of content, we're sharing it with more people. So last week, we began releasing our Patreon videos on YouTube, and the response has been great. Every Wednesday morning, we'll release another one here, and I'll comment on anything in our processes that may have changed in those two years. Like I said a second ago, this is our barbacoa video, so you'll see us trimming up some beef cheeks and barbacoa. We're gonna put them on the smoker, we're gonna season them, and then we're going to put them in a confit and cook them overnight, and then we're gonna mix everything up. It's gonna be bagged, we're gonna heat it up for service, then we're gonna stuff it into an avocado for the barbacado. Barbacado. Let me say that again slowly. Barbacado. Because a lot of people come up to the truck and say barbacoda, like Yoda. It's not barbacoda, it's barbacado. It's barbacoa, avocado, barbacado. It's a half avocado. We score the flesh, we stuff it with barbacoa, and then we top it with onion, salsa, queso fresco, and cilantro. The dish came about because for years we struggled with the amount of barbacoa that we had that we produced when we were making beef cheeks. Beef cheeks obviously our signature item at Leroy and Lewis, very similar to brisket, but it's more unctuous and just stickier and it's super moist and it's really good and it's a perfect replacement for brisket on our menu. But the only downside is that it produces about double the volume, the amount of barbacoa when we trim it off. So there's about half the amount of beef cheeks per barbacoa that we produce whenever we prepare both of those dishes. So while we're selling out of beef cheeks every day, we were stacking up barbacoa in our freezer and just didn't have anything to do with it. We've tried every application. We ground it up for chili. We made every ground meat application you can possibly think of, different sausages. Someone finally said, hey, why don't we just do a baked potato stuffed with barbacoa? And I said, well, first of all, everybody else does a stuffed baked potato, a brisket or a barbecue stuffed baked potato. Let's try to do something a little bit different. Two, we would stuff to prep all the baked potatoes. Plus, we didn't have like a second use for any leftover baked potatoes, so we'd probably just be creating more waste and not dealing with the other extra barbacoa waste that we had to begin with. So I didn't want to do a baked potato. We kind of thought about a few different vegetables and stuff like a sweet potato or a beet or some other kind of root vegetable. None of them really worked or sounded that good until we thought about an avocado. Barbacoa, avocado, stuff it in there, it just works, it just makes sense, and it sounds good, if you say it right. The only thing that's really changed in our barbacoa process here is that we don't really use the hand mixer anymore. It kind of creates a mess everywhere. The beaters to the mixer get really dirty, they get really sticky, all the kind of unctuous stuff, collagen, gelatin, in the barbacoa, in those cheeks, gets stuck onto every pan and every little piece. So the dishes are a hassle enough, it's hard enough to clean up after all the barbacoa straining and mixing and deal with the fat. And then we have to clean the little tiny pieces and little chunks off of the beaters. It's kind of a mess, so we just use a spoon to break it up now. And any time that we would have saved mixing it, we kind of make up on the back end by not having to clean that stuff. Also, we have an appearance in this video by Mao. Mao was our staffer that came over from Singapore to learn how to cook barbecue with us. And he had to leave just after the pandemic started because he didn't have health insurance. We weren't offering it at that point. 
and he just wanted to go back home to be with his family. We didn't really know what was going to happen. Nobody knew what was going to happen at that point. So he went back home. He started his own barbecue place. Look it up. It'll be linked in the description of this video. Smile BBQ on Instagram. Look him up. If you're in Singapore, definitely go check him out. If you have any questions, just drop them down in the comments of this video. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you want to see any of the videos that are not posted here yet, you can go subscribe to our Patreon, where we'll drop new videos every Sunday night. Here's our video making barbacoa and the barbacado. Howdy, we're doing a beef cheek and barbacoa trim tutorial. We've got these beautiful 44 Farms cheeks. They come in uh, five pound packs like these. We're just gonna start trimming them up. What a beautiful piece of meat. Gorgeous, right? I mean, what really are you looking for other than something that's all floppy and flappy and you know, gorgeous looking. Oh, hold on, let me narrate this. What we're doing, uh, what we're really looking for on here is just a nice, like tight, like fish-shaped piece of meat. So it's gonna come in like two lobes, a big lobe with this fatty flap hanging off and a smaller lobe. So we're going to trim them up. Just really take this big piece off. Try to keep this muscle as intact as possible. All this is gonna become Barbacoa. All of it in here. We're basically going to treat these the same way. We're going to both smoke them uh, on the offset, probably for about four hours each. Then we're both going to go in confit. The only difference is these are going to cook overnight in the oven in confit. We're going to strain it and mix it in the morning. These are going to rest at a lower temperature and they're going to be nice and sliceable. And on this bigger cheek, I'm just really cleaning up the edges. There's no need, we're gonna cook them down so much that uh, we really don't need to take off like all of this stuff. Like that'll all cook down, it'll all be tender. I just don't want anything like that. That's gonna just like burn and be weird. But that looks fine. Take this guy off. Clean up the edges. Anything hanging off. That's pretty much it. That's a cheek. All this stuff. Barbacoa. Let's put it on the smoker. So we're out here, we're at the commissary. We got the red pit fired up. We got it full of barbacoa. As you can see, we're not really worried about spacing issues on here. It's kind of all just piled up in a big mass. We really just want to put some smoke on it before we confit it into basically just completely shreddable, completely soft everything. So I'm not really worried too much about seasoning it. We're going to re-season it in case uh, <clears throat> it's not fully seasoned after we mix it. But we're just going to shake some seasoning on here. I mean, it's pretty simple. You don't have to be too precise with it. What kind of rubber are you using? This is our standard two to one, uh, 16 mesh black pepper and kosher salt. By volume, please. Four hours later, all this barbacoa, nice and smoky. It's basically crusted up it got a little bit smoky. If everything under here is not fully cooked or is not fully, you know, doesn't have like bark on it, it's fine. Everything is going to become nice and tender in the confit. It's going to cook long, low and slow overnight in the oven. That's right, guys. We're finishing our barbecue in the oven. Yeah, better than staying up all night. All right, it all just gets off here, off the pits. Try to do two pans here, it might have to be three. We're gonna take the beef fat we rendered in our last video and confit this. All these little bits, all these little yummies. Get them all, get them all, get them all. We're gonna need another pan. We're gonna need a bigger boat. All right, we're gonna take these inside, cover them up with beef fat, two layers of plastic, 
one layer of foil, pop it in the oven overnight. We're inside now. Uh, the barbacoa has come off of the pit. We have four full pans here. This was five 30 pound cases. So it produced four big full hotel pans full of barbacoa. We don't really need a lot of fat to go over here. We're just gonna put basically two quarts each of this pure, clean, beautiful liquid golden beef fat right over here. Oh God, it smells so good. And this doesn't, I mean, we don't really need a lot of fat in here. They don't even need to be covered. We need just a little bit of fat for lubrication. And there's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of moisture still in the, in the beef cheek itself. It's kind of steam, kind of comfy, kind of a little bit of both. It's just gonna cook really low, really slow in a moist environment until everything basically falls apart. So. Double layer of plastic over the top. So what you want is to create a little bit of a pressure situation here. The lid is uh, gonna let out some of the steam. The plastic is really gonna seal everything in, seal all the moisture in. So you'll get more of a steam effect in there. Uh, more of a moist cooking situation in here. We're going into a dry cooking environment in the oven. We need a moist cooking environment for all of the liquid uh, collagen to break down to gelatin to get you that really lip smacking kind of unctuousness that is very uh, indicative of barbacoa. Double layer of plastic, single layer of foil. Make sure, write the time and date it goes in or else you're never going to know. We've got our oven set on about 250, 200, 225. Wouldn't really know, Brad uh, scrubbed all the numbers off. So well, it's kind of a guess. You don't have it for cleaning now. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, good night, nighty night. Oh, didn't see you there. We have our barbacoa. It's come out of the oven. This is the next morning. It's been confiting overnight. You can see that we didn't put a lot of fat in here, but it really cooked down, melted down. Almost, uh, we have the iceberg effect going here where there's a couple little pieces kind of sticking up at the top, but most everything is underneath. Um, so once again, this is all scraps, right? This is no like big, beautiful pieces of meat. It's all gonna be chopped and screwed, uh, just like we like it. Um, chopped and screwed, shout out Houston. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna strain this uh, we're going to use a very specific high-powered kitchen tool to mix it um, and then we're going to back it up and get ready. So strain it, first thing we're going to do, uh, we got a big deep uh, six inch hotel pan here and I have a perforated hotel pan here. If you just want to do this at home, what you can do is use a strainer or a colander set over a bowl. You'll obviously have a lot less. Uh, or you can just like, you know, like, like take it out in, um, you know, batches with like a spider or something. But here we go. Strain, here we go. All this stuff. So you can see all these big scraps and so they're just literally so soft. They're completely falling apart. So how do we mix this stuff up without burning our hands? Make it nice and homogenous? Well, we have to use a very specific and high powered and costly kitchen tool. You might not be able to find it um, in just your average home kitchen. Let me give you just a quick peek at it right here. Black & Decker, uh, I think that's an $11 purchase on Amazon. Here we go. Ooh, mix it up there, chef. You don't need to go on the high setting here. You don't need to burn out your extremely high powered motor on your extremely expensive mixer. You want to keep your hands free in this situation. Don't want to lose a knuckle in here. That's pretty much all we're doing. Mix it up. Mix it up, make sure all the big pieces are 
mixed up like this piece right here. Make sure it's crushed up. You really want to get this nice and homogenous and mixed up. And we're going to go right back after it's strained into here. Woo! From here, it's going to go into bags, it's going to go into half pounds, it's going to go into sandwiches, and it's going to go into barbacados. What about all this fat? All this fat, we can reuse some of it for uh, more confit. We're only going to reuse it one more time, and then it's just going to get 86. Sorry. Third time's a charm on the barbacado. Um, Let's try again. We're just gonna cut this like we're making some guacamole. Open it up and hope that it's nice and green. Hey, that's nice. Beautiful. Cut side down, please. So for the barbacado, what we're gonna do is just score this baby. We're gonna leave the skin on, uh, just in case anybody wants to scoop it up and just eat it like that, like their Ezekiel Elliott. Um, but we're just gonna score it right, like kind of diagonal. Maybe one inch kind of scores just like that. And then kind of just do the crosshatch pattern the other way. That was awesome. Boom. Right on the bread. Why are we doing it on the bread? So you can dump it out and eat it like a fold over. No doy. Barbacoa. Nice third pan. We'll do about a quarter, a little bit less than a quarter on here, about a fifth of a pound on the barbacoa. Let's garnish. So we don't put any lime on here. A lot of people put some lime, but we're going to do some ceboyas. Salsa verde, jalapeno salsa, garlic comfy, smoked jalapenos, some cilantro, queso fresco, cilantro. Mas cilantro. That's it. Beautiful baby boy barbacado. Bellini? <laughs>